All right, traders, it is time to prepare to trade the best setups at the best prices. Our level that we called out 438 days in advance was the peak. It was a phenomenal opportunity to short the SPY and buy put options for the bull trap. With that being said, I'm seeing strong confirmations of phenomenal trades setting up tomorrow. I'm seeing great bull traps and I'm seeing great bear traps. I'm gonna be sharing with you our key levels heading into tomorrow where we're planning to buy call options and ride it up and where we're planning to buy put options for the way down. I'm gonna show you how we're planning to make money trading both ways heading into tomorrow. We're gonna start off with the trading plan and then we're gonna end up recapping the trades and the price action and the analysis. So let's get straight into it. So in terms of trader society, we had 50 people green, 11 red. We will have a little bit more red than usual when it comes to FOMC days. Regardless though, in terms of the commentary and analysis, it was a pretty good day. In terms of some of the results that members ended up getting, members ended up getting some crazy results today. You know, that's what can occur with FOMC. With that being said, um, we had one trader make over 180 grand today. We had another trader who just joined yesterday, made $1,000, and here he is back at it again with another $1,000 profit. We had um, Jared ended up making $10,000 using some of the live stream commentary that I had given out. We're gonna be going over all that stuff, but I wanna give some shout outs real quick. So let's get into it, man. So what's the game plan heading into tomorrow? This is gonna be very simple. For tomorrow, I'm gonna say there's gonna be four levels, but mainly three. This is what I wanna bring awareness to. So I've been studying on how SPY reacts when it forms like this trend reversal candlestick towards major resistance. And what it's telling me is there should be good opportunities to buy put options towards the high of day, and there should be good opportunities to try call options towards the low of the day. In terms of what would be the best case scenario, both case scenarios should do very, very well tomorrow. So I'm interested in playing calls and puts where the bull and bear traps were created. So this would be considered your best level for put options. If it goes to this level tomorrow, this is where you're gonna wanna do puts. So in terms of support, that was never really retested, this was like temporary support, is like right here at this like 438.70. 438.70, 438.90, that zone is gonna be your best level for puts. If SPY goes back to that price this week, we should see a drop. Basically, those 439 puts, if they go out of the money or if they're barely um, you know, in the money, they're gonna start going in the money to deeper in the money. So I'm interested in doing puts at 438.80 to 438.90. That was a temporary support for a couple minutes. That was never retested. It just sold off from the level. So I'm very interested in that trade idea. Another trade idea that I'm seeing setting up is this 437.18. So here's the deal. If the SPY gaps, gaps down tomorrow, if it is rejecting 437 in the pre-market, if it's already gapping down, I will be very interested in doing put options at the previous closing price, 437 to 437.18. If it gaps down, if it gaps up, I'm looking for 438.80. If I don't get in towards the level, then I look for a strong bearish confirmation on the 30 minute in between the zone of the previous closing price, 437.18 and the best level, 438.80, right? If it has a hard rejection off of 437 and it reacts as a resistance when it bounces back up for the lower high, I'll be very interested in put options as well at 437. Now, in terms of my only levels for calls, I'm going with the more oversold ones. So um, SPY ended up having a phenomenal gap close reversal today. This was one of the levels that we mentioned. I wasn't interested in trading at it. However, I did call out calls on the live stream when the gap filled towards 434.50. But um, with that being said, and then I did it towards the close as well. I called that out twice. Those were great trade ideas. But um, with that being said, it had its gap close reversal. SPY came crashing down. It filled the gap at 434. Then it shot back up to 437 and then 437 reacted as a resistance. Then it began to sell off. Then it closed back towards 437. What did I tell you in the video that I posted? I told you to wait for it to crash. This was the crash. It sold off at 437, had a massive crash. Then it had a gap close reversal. If it pumps back up to 437 where the bull trap was created, do puts. That was another great trade idea that worked very, very nicely. As soon as it tested 437, 
the puts went out of the money and guess what they went straight back in the money for a one dollar drop that scalp was a very nice trade that was hit within minutes i called that out as well in advance that's that classic trading strategy that i love using where a bull trap gets created spies trading at support it has a big sell-off once it spikes back up to that previous support this is the support right here at 437 once those 437 puts go out of the money the most likely outcome is they're going to become back in the money to profit so you buy them out of the money and then you sell them back in the money quickly for a scalp and you could have done that multiple times today but um in terms of the call option levels these are the levels that i would consider heading heading into tomorrow i would focus on the wicks this would be the best price possible four hundred and thirty three dollars and sixty cents basically towards the lows 433.60 and um 434 that zone is going to be a great level for calls you can keep an eye on this bottom wick at 435 as well basically what i'm telling you is this is the most likely uh, most likely outcome for quick scalps tomorrow in terms of calls if 435 calls go out of the money they will likely go back in the money so if you buy them out of the money you sell them in the money you profit in terms of the 434 idea if 434 calls go out of the money they will likely go straight back to the money and then that would be the best trade idea my true interest for calls is um at 434 to 433.60 i love the idea of buying calls there basically based off of the daily candle that formed this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing where the high of day is going to be either at the previous closing price or it's going to be at 438.80 and we will be able to determine that based off of if it gaps down or not and based off the confirmations that we're going to be using right and if we do hit puts at the lower level and we get stopped out we'll wait for better confirmation or we'll hit them at the higher level make all the money back and more and then in terms of calls based off the daily candle that i'm seeing 434 calls would be your best bet once they go out of the money that is my simple trading plan um, for tomorrow and that was all based off of studying how spy reacts when it forms this candlestick right here on the daily chart throughout its history that's what i'm seeing right so um, i want you focused on puts at the higher levels and then calls at the lower levels now if calls do get stopped out you know we're gonna have hard stops at this 433.60 if we do get stopped out then the only level we're going to be looking for calls would be 429.60 429.60 would be a phenomenal level for calls. We can have a nice bounce at this level right here, 432 as well. 432 was previous resistance where a crazy bear trap was created. See how once it broke above 432, it had a massive breakout instead of having a massive crash? Well, since it had such a massive breakout, plus it's already reversing at the gap, it's likely going to bounce at 432 when it goes to 432. And you can use that same thesis at 429.90. You will see, man, all these key levels that i'm giving you guys when these options go out of the money so when spy goes below 432 and the 432 go, calls go out of the money even if it doesn't have a crazy reversal or a crazy bounce you'll see it'll likely have a small bounce a small spike and they'll go back in the money and that small little move is a big profit for scalpers within minutes it doesn't have to have a crazy bounce or a crazy reversal it just has to have a small move where you buy the contracts a little bit out of the money and then you sell them in the money very very quickly and you will see in terms of trend reversals all of these levels that i'm calling out will likely work if you do that initial reactions you just kind of get in i love these trading ideas that are coming up tomorrow's going to be a phenomenal trading day now in terms of the day let's kind of discuss some of the trading ideas and the trade recaps and some of the commentary that was addressed um within today's stream so um I sat out at 2 p.m. because I don't want to gamble and toss a coin. However, in terms of the most likely outcome and what we've been telling traders is, we've been telling traders that 438 is like your best level for puts. And then if it breaks above that, we're not interested in calls, even though it could go to 443, we're just going to wait for 443. And the way we came up with that 438 level was once we noticed that right here, so SPY, the 52 week highs are, were at 431.73. That was the 52 week highs. So you have to go further back throughout the chart history and you have to see where the next resistance level is on the daily chart and in terms of where the next resistance level was on the daily chart once we go above those 52 week highs at 432 you can just visually see there is no resistance until right here this is where your resistance is the high of this 438 this is where the massive bull trap was created and remember i told you the most likely outcome is on the initial reaction when nobody expects it when those 438 puts go out of the money they're going to bring them back straight in the money and then you will see a crash that's why we were interested in doing puts 
at that specific level. And I called out puts on the retest of 437. That was a great idea. If you watch the trading video that I posted 20 minutes before FOMC, I made it very, very clear identify the support and resistance. Your support is at 437. Your resistance is at 437.50 to 438, right? So if it creates a major bull trap, a major crash where it cracks below 437, instead of just buying puts as it's downtrending, what I like to do is I like to miss out first and just let it crash. The bigger the crash, the better. And then what I like to do is in the meantime, I'll look for trend reversals to buy calls. And I called this out on the stream. I told people, if you want to do calls here and I actually hit calls on here, unfortunately, my timing was a little bit off and I got spooked out. So I took a small loss on it. But um, in terms of this idea, this, this is a great idea. I called out calls. Once it filled the gap at 433.70, I called out the calls at 434.40. I waited for a little bounce. I usually don't do that. I usually just kind of get in. But um, that worked out phenomenally. But um, with that being said, you wait for it, you know, to go back to 437 to play the puts. That's where you play the puts. You don't play puts into the overreaction to the downside. You wait for it to spike back up where the bull trap was created. Where was the bull trap created? Study the support. And then as soon as the support cracked, massive crash. So you know to do puts right where this red line was. And as soon as it hit 437, surely enough, the moment 437 puts went out of the money, they went straight back to in the money. It's like, if you do this, you don't even have to wait for a confirmation. It literally reverses the moment the puts go out of the money at my key level. If the key level is 437 and it goes above 437, you'll see it happen all the time. It reverses right back in the money. And you can see it wasn't a crazy reversal, but this was a very lucrative drop where if you did what I just said, you would have made a very nice profit within just three minutes, it dropped a dollar. The contracts went nuts, right? And the key is to just get in and get out, not to hold and hope. If you hold a put right here at 436, what's your risk? Your risk is it goes straight back up to 437. How do you know that? Because in two minutes, it went to 437 once it bombed at 436. That's how you know that. The chart is gonna give you all of the answers you are seeking, not the indicators, not whatever it is that you're looking at in terms of data. It's all in the chart. The chart is gonna show you where the floors are and where the roofs are, where the bull traps are and where the bear traps are. And if it's not showing you that, then they haven't been created. You're not going back throughout the daily chart in the history and studying where those levels that haven't been tested yet were created. You have to do your homework. So um, those are some valid points that I wanted to make. Now, with that being said, um, in terms of other trade ideas that were um, you know, made and addressed, I had a nice put call out, man. This was a very nice trade here. I noticed that um, SPY was beginning to downtrend. So it topped out at 437.50. We knew there was major resistance at 437.50. That was slightly above the bull trap level. Then it started selling off. And then right here, you can see the support was at 437 right here. Well, it cracked that support. So since it cracked, that means the trend's trying to flip bearish again. And then once I noticed it was forming lower highs, forming lower highs, selling off, spiked back up, top wick at this previous bottom wick. You see that bearish reaction, bearish reaction. Top wick is now at the bottom wick. This bottom support is now reacting as a roof and resistance. As soon as I saw that, I called out. 436 puts, sold them in the money. It was such a phenomenal trade idea to do that. And then in terms of calls, my last trade of the day, this was the best, um, this was one of the best ones as well. I called out calls literally towards the low of day. And I'm gonna show you how I was able to do that. How was I able to call out calls? Um, if you look right here, this was such a good, this was such a good trade, man. I nailed it back to back. If I type in 435 calls. Um, you'll see it pop up right here at 3.50 p.m. I called out 4.35 calls and I made $1,000 in just two minutes from that alert. Right after I did the puts and banked on the puts, I made $2,000 on the puts. Um, in terms of the calls, why did I call out calls at 3.50 p.m.? And keep in mind, when I called that out, this candle was towards the lows. I wasn't in towards the highs at 4.36. I was in towards the lows when I called that out. But how was I able to do that? The reason why I called out calls there is I was looking at the 30 minute chart and the 30 minute chart was telling me that it was going to try to spike back. If you guys have been following along and watching the videos, I've been preaching for weeks now, every single time on this bullish uptrend that SPY has been having is this trend that I brought awareness to with 30 minute candles that I've been using to profit on calls. Every single time it forms a wick, you see the wick? Every single time it forms a top wick throughout the day, it'll go back up to the wick 
And then that's where you short and play puts if you like, if it's like a bearish wick like this. But the point is it will retest and try to spike back towards the high of the wick. Go back and study the past. It's been doing it consistently. So when I noticed that SPY formed another wick here towards 438, just like it did right here, and then it quickly shot back up to the high of that wick, I told myself that's going to be a good opportunity for calls if it goes to an oversold level. So using that data on the 30 minute chart, I then had to figure out what would be a good entry to buy those calls. And I looked at this pattern, this pattern that was formed yesterday at the same price. I love doing this, right? So um, I studied it and you can see once the spy, so the low of this candle is at 437.18. This is how you measure the bottom. The low of this is at 437.18. And then if you go to the next 30 minutes, the low was at 434.60. So it dropped like 60 cents. It dropped 60 cents from the low of this candle. So the way I would measure that, if this pattern were to repeat itself and we were to try to figure out what would be a good entry for calls, it would be 60 cents if you were to go with the exact lows of, of the bottom of that 30 minute candle. So right here, the low of the 30 minute candle is at 435.70. If you were to go 60 cents below, 435.10 would be the best entry for calls. Now, am I gonna nickel and dime that? Because history tends to repeat itself and patterns tends to work in terms of the ones that I capture with these trends, but um, I don't wanna nickel and dime it and I'm gonna use the chart also to help give me an entry. And I came up with this entry. I told people in advance, if we go to 435.10, that low of the 30 minute candle that I used to measure the move, along with 435.30, I would, do, I would be doing calls. The reason why I said 435.30 is this. This was previous resistance that was never really tested. I want you to take a look at this chart here. You can visually see this was previous resistance right here, 435.30. See the resistance and the nice drop? That's resistance. Well, when SPY broke above that and formed a floor, it had a massive breakout. So since it had such a strong move to the upside and based off that pattern that I showed you, it's gonna try to bottom 60, 70 cents towards the bottom of that previous 30 minute candle. And then it's gonna try to reverse like it did last time to test the high of that wick. It's going to bottom likely at the previous resistance level where the, where the um, trap was created. This is where the bull trap was created right here. Then it flipped into a bear trap. So it's likely going to bounce at this previous resistance level. That's why I said 435.30. You can search all of this stuff, man. There's such a good trade idea. 435.30. You can search it all. Look at this. 3.32 p.m. 3.32 p.m. The final trade idea is calls at 435.30 to 4.35. The exact low was at 435.13. Um, Literally the exact low was at 435.13. That range was the best entry for calls. I hit it, I made $1,000 in two minutes. And then I played puts before that for a $2,000 profit. And then I called it. Now in terms of my day, I did, I, I did have some trades. All the trades were phenomenal. Every single trade idea that I gave out was phenomenal. The problem was I was doing two things wrong. I was entering my calls on green candles and every time I did that, it would drop and then I would just like sell and play it safe and cut my loss. The volatility was just too insane. And I would do the same thing for puts. When um, when SPY was going down, I would buy a put instead of going up in the green candle like I like to do, um, I would do the puts and then it would spike back up and I would get stopped out. I had a couple losses. So technically on the day, I lost $1,000. But the main reason why I believe um, I was off is because I was live streaming. I trade best when I'm not live streaming. When I post the plan within the chat and all these trades are in real time and people are wondering, well, how do you post a trade real time if you type it out? Two ways. I give a plan beforehand and I trade the plan to bring awareness to it. But um, I will type out the actual alert before I enter the trade. And then the second I enter the trade, all I do is click a button and it sends out the alert. So everything's premeditated. The plan is premeditated and the trade is premeditated. I will type out exactly um, the exact trade that I'm making. And then as soon as I enter the trade, as soon as I click, you know, buy the market order, um, I get in the trade and then I submit the order. That's how I'm able to do it in real time because I don't type out the trade after I send out the alert. I type out the trade before I send out the alert. And then the moment I get in, I just push a button and it's literally real time. I've noticed in my experience, I trade the best when I'm not live streaming. And I believe the reason for that is, is um, I like trading on my phone. You know, I've been trading on my iPhone since um, 2015 and you know, I've put in over 10, tens of thousands of hours watching charts on my phone. And if I'm looking at a desktop or if I'm looking at different charts, bigger screens, distracted on stream, on the mic, taking myself out of my head instead of being in my head and laser focused on my phone and in my right state of mind, I just don't do as good if I'm in that situation. So I'm really just gonna try to stick to that chat in a sense. But um, I'm telling you, man, 
we absolutely crushed it in terms of analysis and commentary. And as a team, we did fairly well. You know, it really goes to show you, even though I had a small red day, just a thousand dollar loss, we had many people do extremely well because they held for a little bit longer or they didn't get stopped out or they just stuck to the trading plan and they traded their own plan and they traded the analysis in the commentary. It's crazy because as soon as I hopped off the stream, I did two trades. I did a put right here at 435 at 436.50, cashed out on that quick. And then I did calls at the bottom all off stream. When I'm on stream, the trades just weren't as good and they just didn't hit the same. And like I said, the reason why I believe that is, is because I trade best on my phone. Um, if I'm looking at charts that look different on a computer, I will not trade well and I will not be as confident and um, I will not be in the flow state because that flow state that I developed in terms of reading price action came from my phone. That's where it came from because when I was in school, all I had access to was a phone and in terms of my experience as a trader, I put in the most time to reading charts in my phone and I found a special state of mind, a special way to read charts using my phone on the TD Ameritrade mobile app. That's just what, that's just what works best for me and that has been my experience. I can't speak for other people's experiences, but in terms of my experience, based off of everything that I tried in terms of trading. I trade best on my phone. And also if I'm live streaming, looking at things that don't look the same because I'm not looking at my phone and I'm talking on the mic, it's bringing me out of my head. Whereas if I'm in my head, not saying a word and I'm more focused and I'm doing everything on my phone, it just works out a lot better. You have to know, um, you know, your intuition, you have to know what brings the most confidence and the most competence as a trader, you know, you will see very, very big differences on the charts you're reading, on the platforms you're using, on the tools you're using to trade on, whether it's your phone or whether it's your desktop. For some people, when they trade on their phone, they fucking suck. For me, I suck when I trade on a laptop or when I trade on a desktop. For whatever reason, I'm absolutely terrible. But when it comes to looking at my phone on the TD Ameritrade mobile app, now if I were to use other apps, I wouldn't be able to read the market as good. But in terms of like having a read on price action and having an intuition, having a certain feeling and a certain confidence, it comes from what you're comfortable with, what you put the most time into, and um, just whatever works for you, you know, whatever works for you. I've seen people create strategies with certain brokers just using line charts. They'll have a, a certain intuition, a certain feeling just off the way it looks on a line chart with their broker and they won't get that same feeling, that same intuition using another broker. That's another thing I wanna bring awareness to. It is a huge difference on, on what you use for charts and if you're on a phone or if you're on a desktop, um, you know, whether you're using um, Thinkorswim, Webull, it's all a big difference. You will not feel the same. If I'm, if I'm trading charts on a TD Ameritrade mobile app for 10 years, and then I jump over to Webull and I trade on their charts, or I jump onto a desktop instead of my phone, I trade their charts, you will see there's gonna be a drastic difference because it's just not there. The experience isn't there. The type of read isn't there. It's gonna look different. It's gonna feel different and you're not gonna have that fucking confidence. Um, but in terms of my situation, I'm truly in an amazing situation because I can literally trade better on my phone walking around doing anything. I could be walking around in the airport. I can be multitasking on my phone. I will trade a hundred times better that way than sitting here chained, locked up on a desk or doing a live stream and you'll see, I just won't perform as well, man. So that's the beauty of it, man, because I could literally do this from anywhere in the world with data on my phone. It's, it's just truly incredible. I've tried, believe me, I tried to get good on a laptop or desktop. It just doesn't hit the same. It's just not there. So um, that's just something that you have to figure out for yourself. What tools, what platforms work best for you? Because I'm telling you, it is very real to have as a trader to have um, intuition, to have intuition and to have a feeling and to have confidence and to have a state of mind. All four of those things, if you don't have that, it's just not gonna hit the same. And I'm telling you, like, if I'm not on my phone using TD Ameritrade mobile app, I just will not have that. For whatever reason, I will not have that. And like I said, it's what I first started trading on and it's just what I found to be that works best for me in, in my experience. I can't speak for other people. But um, it's very important to have that and it's very important to recognize why you have that and where you're getting it from, whether that's a certain platform, whether that's how your charts look or how your charts are set up, whether you like trading on a smaller screen or a bigger screen, don't be fooled thinking, you know, if you have a bunch of monitors, you're gonna trade better. If you have a bunch of monitors, you're not gonna be able to see everything because your eyes have to move in other areas to see other charts, to see other time frames. But if you just have one simple chart on a small screen, you could flip throughout time frames quickly. You could just be dialed in and laser focused in on one specific thing while everyone's eyes is focused on a bunch of other things. They're not gonna be as tapped in to that one thing. If you put all of your energy and units into one thing, you're gonna get the best results. So in my experience, that's what's worked out for me. I just wanted to share, share um, 
share that with you guys because I thought it'd be interesting because I don't really see anybody else talking about that. But um, yeah, that's the game plan for tomorrow. If you do want to be a part of Trader Society, I'm telling you, we're going to absolutely crush it. Fridays are my best day. I'm seeing an amazing day to be making money tomorrow as well. So I'm looking forward to that. It should be a phenomenal day, man. If you want to join Trader Society, I would really encourage you to join. It's the first link down below in the description. We have several people recently joined. They made back three to four times the cost of the program on their first two days. Um, and it's the first link in the description. So you get, it's a one-time fee. It is a lifetime access program at a one-time fee. And um, you can also write it off. It's a tax write-off as well. Education is a tax write-off. And um, you know, in, in terms of the tools you invest into, that's a tax write-off as well. And, um, you know, you get access to the video lesson library, the courses, you get access to the trading floor, the spy trading floor, the moderators within the spy trading floor, all my real time analysis, all my real time trade alerts. It's written in here, man. This is all set in stone, man. You cannot make this stuff up in terms of what I put out. It's truly insane on how accurate this stuff is. Um, you could just visually see, man, 438 to 437. This is the bearish zone. This is where we wanted to do puts. I hit puts here in the morning. I did very, very well, and then I called it, and then I had like two losses after that on FOMC, and then I had two wins after that. It was a phenomenal day, man. But um, if you wanna join, you get access to the real-time alerts, the real-time analysis, the watch list, the key levels. You can ask us any question you may have. You get access to the moderators. You get access to the video lesson library, the community, the networking opportunities, um, along with you know mentoring and stuff like that. Live streams, live voice channels, and I'm telling you, man, this is where the money is. You're gonna see the best traders on this spy floor there's nothing like it in terms of what top g did today he's basically um the best scalper within trader society he's up there he's one of the best he's the only one that has a program within trader society that you can join for a small monthly fee but um he'll give you some free trades as well he'll try to make you back the cost of the program before you join that but i would strongly recommend if you're looking for extra guidance and mentorship that you join his program um we partnered together on that He's the only trader, he, he learned from me, he's been in the program from the start, and I've never seen anyone like him. And if you looked at what he did on the spy floor, spy floor today, it is truly unbelievable. And he has his own section within the chat, it's all private, but you can just see, man, if you go to his poll section, it all speaks for itself. Every single day, it's just green, 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 like barely anybody is going red within his program. There's nothing like it, man. Like you can just see that barely anyone is going red on his program. The results, it's like a 90% plus win rate almost every single day. It's truly incredible on what he has done, man, if you just look at his history. But he's absolutely crushing it, man. I would encourage you to check him out as well. It's all in Trader Society. It's the first link down below in the description. That's how you can get access to his program as well um, if you'd like to sign up on top of that. But um, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow live at Market Open. We're going to absolutely crush it.